All right, we got the radio out. There was a 10 millimeter nut holding this on. Um, against that screw right there. And when I take it down here somewhere. So, I'll try to find another one to put on there because I don't know where it went to. But, I accessed it. I accessed it. Uh, accessed it by going in through the top here with an extension and a 10 millimeter swivel. I just got it like that and just screw it off. It was very simple. Then the nut fell off into the in, um, behind the dashboard. But so now I have access to. You got it to work? No, I'm still doing it. I have access to where the six disc CD changer would have been plugged up if I had one. But the radio power source, speakers and whatnot. And then what I want most, this antenna port. Okay, so I have the antenna part. I'm always ashy. Oh, that's paint and ash. But uh, I have the antenna part coming from the FM stereo modulator going into the back of the antenna port on the radio. And then the original antenna wire coming from from out of the dashboard going into the service port that came pre-wired to the FM stereo, stereo modulator. And now, so that's tapped into the antenna right there. Coming out of the car and going into the back of the stereo, the unit itself. Then on the other end, we have a ground wire to install or a connect and a live wire, a 12 volt live wire. So what I'm gonna do is use a quick connect, a couple of quick connects, which look like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you. Just in case you didn't know how to click the um, the quick connect work, um, you put both of the wires you want to connect into this little fixture, and then this metal part drops down kind of like a guillotine and splices into both of them once you fold it over and close it. So it push that little metal filament or piece comes down and connects both wires together. So you see, there's holes for there's channels for two wires okay what we ended up doing was um, running the quick clamp connector right here to this red and white wire coming out of the the OEM harness it's a constant power source 12 volts Is this thing not focusing well it's a red and white wire coming straight out of the um out of the vehicle itself and we're running the power wire through that because it's 12 volts and the unit requires 12 volts. So the power coming from the red coming from the unit is going to this red and white wire coming out the uh, this OEM harness. We tried using the red from this bundle over here and the black as a ground, but it was not giving us any power. Uh, we tested it with the ohm meter and still no no power coming out of these this particular bundle so uh, that's that we've decided to go with this for the power source and the ground we actually used this stud down here and we just extended the ground wire and that's our ground down there and we'll snake this up and through the back here and connect it to the negative part of the unit which is hanging off right here and we're getting power. All right, we have everything wired up um, as it should be. We have power going to our unit. Um, and before we button everything down and make everything look pretty, I know it's a mess right now. We just have cell phones everywhere. Um, we're gonna go ahead and plug everything in, which we've done so already. We have the red and white going into the, the FM stereo modulator box. And we have the power source. We have a power source. We have the unit turned on and we have auxiliary plugged into that and go ahead and see what we get we have it on 87.9 radio station 87.9 which is this one and then you have 88.3 but we're using 87.9 and this sounds pretty good let's see let's press next or is that 
that YouTube. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a little hole so that the wiring for the so that the wiring for the auxiliary input, the three millimeter jack, can sit inside, sit inside here. Of course, it'll be flush mount again. It'll be flush mount against this wall right here. The wires will just go straight through there. And that way it'll look pretty, pretty OEM as much as possible. Okay, we got everything ran through the snake through the interior of the dashboard. We have our new antenna cable, our speakers, and also our uh, quick connected area uh, for the power to the FM modulator. We have power source going to the radio, which I don't still don't get. And we have down here the right and left audio jack so uh, that connects to the FM modula modulator and also the power source for the modulator right here. So we can start putting it back together. Now the screw that was attached to here, the nut, and like I said, it fell down in there earlier. I don't know where it is. And it's, I thought it was a ground, but it's actually not. I'm not even sure what it is. But the radio works fine without it. So I'm not even gonna bother trying to find that screw and hooking it back up because it's not a ground. So it's not important to me. Yes. So we have power. Just constant power, I guess. Because the key is not in, the car is not on. And this slides back into place where the screws will go here, here, and down in here. Should we go ahead and put some of those screws back in? You have the, you get that screwdriver. Right there. Like this. Use that to put it here. It's not a magnet, so how does it work? It don't that matter, work? cause you get a guide again. Let's see. Start the car and put it in drive so the gear shifter is out of the way. And, um, and here is our box. We actually have this part on there so that the adhesive um, on the other side of the audio input, whatever it is, dongle, <laughs> will just make a nice, nice flat, even connection. And of course, out of the back of it, we have the parts that are going to connect to the inside of the car. So. One. Is this right? Or should it be coming down here? You need to be coming down here. Okay. So we have to come under this. Connect. Connect. And connect. And we have it just sitting in there because I doubt if it goes anywhere. Uh, tucked back there behind some wires. Doesn't seem like it's gonna go anywhere at all. And this. Don't you take that off? Take what off. 
still do the same. We'll hook back up the hazards, the passenger airbag light. And, and whatever this one is, passenger seatbelt light. Airbag. Let me see the airbag is it says passenger. I don't know why it says passenger on both sides. Then, like I said earlier, the dash, this whole console came out by popping tabs. So we just push it back in place until they click. And that is it, it's in there. So again, we'll give it a try. Um, we'll put it back in park, I guess, turn it on. And we changed the radio station to 88.3. So that's, so our radio is still wor working. We don't have any channels programmed right now because all right, there's one. But like I said, we changed it to 88.3. So that what we did? 88.3. So we're trying 88.3. Where's your phone? <laughs> my phone is dead. We need a phone. Okay, my phone is dead. Hers is in the house. So she's going to get it right now. Now it sounds like there's some music playing on this radio station already, so we may have to change it to the 87.9 radio station. It's not a strong signal, but it's still a signal. So we also bought this extreme Bluetooth, little Bluetooth thing. Uh, we've just had it in our cars previous, before this one. We've actually just got this Endeavor a couple weeks ago, probably three weeks ago now, and it had no auxiliary input or anything like that, so we were dying without one. But now it seems like we have one. Okay. Once I powered on the auxiliary input, then this radio station became dedicated to that auxiliary. So, with it off, of course you hear the static. As soon as you turn it on, or the static and there's some mild talking. But as soon as you turn it on, that goes away. And it becomes dedicated to your device. So we should be able to hook the device up and play. I hear noise as she's hooking it up so it seems like it's a go. Nice and clear. Oh, that is it. That's our auxiliary. That's us installing an auxiliary input in our 2005 Mitsubishi Endeavor. The auxiliary input will stay right there. You can still use this area for whatever you want to. The wires, the space between the back of this pocket and the wire and the auxiliary input dongle is probably an inch. So. Um, it's not a lot of not not a lot of free space behind it. That is it. Once we get rid of this clamp, which is just holding it down for adhesive purposes, which I'll move in an hour or so just to get a nice good grip, it'll be be ready to go. All right, thanks for watching. Just to secure this in better, we actually went in and um, just put a, a bolt right there through there, and that way it holds it in there. It's not going anywhere now. So the adhesive on there was not that strong and it would just move but now I think it's not going anywhere